Hey everybody, it's Charlie from Daily Motor. And this week we've been out driving the 2021 Ford Bronco Sport. This Bronco Sport is the Badlands trim, which makes it really quite appealing because it's got a little bit more off-road capability, actually quite a bit more. Good approach angles, good optional off-road tires and wheels. But as you can see right here, getting onto the highway for the start of our review, it's still plenty livable in daily situations. We actually just wrapped up our highway fuel economy test, and this thing it did pretty darn well. 27 miles per gallon, all said and done, and really wasn't that uncomfortable or ponderous despite it being kind of a rolling brick. This upgraded two liter turbocharged engine is grunty, provides good daily livability for this car. And what's really made me the happiest about driving this car around for the last week is that it's the first absolutely recommendable Ford product I've driven in years. Almost everything I've driven from Ford over the last few years has had some head scratching aspect about it that's like really Ford why how could you screw this up that sort of thing not so in the Bronco Sport this thing drives well it looks good it's got all the features you could want and more so and everything just works nicely the biggest complaint I've had about it it's just that the drive mode indicator down here when you turn it to the right turns the screen to the left and when you turn it to the left turns the screen to the right and if that's my biggest complaint about this car, then you know it's got to be pretty good. As spec, the one we're driving right now is about $36,000. That's a little steep in the compact crossover market, but you're getting a lot for that. You're getting adaptive cruise control with a really competent active lane keeping feature. I mean, we're talking like Tesla autopilot levels of lane keeping ability. You've got good navigation. You've got an excellent touchscreen. It's super responsive, it looks really good, it's got connections with your main mobile devices. And if you're missing anything, there's an upgraded package you can get for a few thousand dollars to get a premium sound system and a few other goodies, making this just that much more appealing. The best thing about the Bronco Sport is how it feels to drive. It's a good blend of approachable, capable, and makes you feel like kind of a badass on the road. It's got this large, imposing hood, you sit just high enough up to feel like you're like you mean something but at the same time it's not as awful to drive as a Wrangler like that one right there you can actually hustle it around a little bit and not feel like you're about to tip it over I really like this car I think it's neat we even took it on some off-roading in our live drive so that was a lot of fun we were able to toss it around and once we kind of gained confidence in its off-roading abilities, <laughs> we threw it and it handled it like a champ. <laughs> Came around that corner pretty sharp and the electronic stability control really settled things down. That was pretty funny. So there's a lot of common sense usability in here. The climate control, it's just single zone, but that's fine. It's super easy to use. You got these big grippy knobs, change the fan speed, you can change temperature all that good stuff you've got heated seats you've got physical controls for your volume and your track selection you've even got a forward-facing camera that you can use when you're doing slower stuff like running on the trail let's do a quick 60 to 0 and 0 to 60 test I'm actually quite impressed with that braking distance turn it into sport mode It's not exactly a rocket ship, but it gets the job done and it's plenty good for this class. I like the gauge cluster. I think the graphics and readout are fitting for this vehicle. The only thing that's a bit of a head scratcher is why they even bothered to include an analog tachometer. I mean, it looks good, but the digital one works so well that for this type of vehicle, I don't really see the need. I could see it more in a conventional 
vehicle like the F-150, where I think they should have gone with a conventional speedometer. I'm really impressed with the transmission this whole week. I haven't had any weird stumbles. It seems like Ford's finally getting their act together when it comes to transmission tuning. Now, from other reviewers, you're going to hear about cheap materials in this car. But let's be honest with yourself. You're not expecting a luxury car, and if you want to keep the prices reasonable, you, you got to make compromises somewhere. And I would so much rather them compromise with materials that you're not going to interact with very regularly. Things like inside the door pocket or way up here on the dash. And focus the money that they can use into the drivetrain, into the off-roading abilities, into the infotainment system. I think they did a really good job doing all that. And the things you do touch regularly feel nice. You'd be surprised how good this leather feels on the center console. It's supple and it's squishy and I like it. The knobs feel good. The only thing that you have to touch regularly that feels cheap are the door handles and the turn signal stalks. I feel like they could have done just a bit more to make those feel better, but you get used to them pretty quick. It's the perfect kind of ride quality for roads like we have here in Michigan, because nothing's exactly smoothed out and luxurious, but you can also bound over all the bumps and potholes and road imperfections, and nothing comes through the cabin too harsh or loud or jolty. And a lot of people appreciate that. Let's take this thing through a little bit of off-roading. We're not nearly going to get to its maximum capabilities, but it's still fun to just see it a little bit out in this element. We do have multiple off-road drive modes. We can lock the rear diff. But for a dirty two-track like this, you don't really need that. Soaks up the bumps super well. Steering is very agile. And I'll show you that camera feature. If you slow down a bit. Come on. You have the forward-facing camera. You can see as you come up to things for some reason. In normal drive mode, it turns off at like five miles per hour, but if you switch it to mud and ruts, then that camera comes up and it stays up to about 20 miles per hour. So that's pretty cool. Look at that, twins. The sun's a little harsh, but let's take a look around some more here in the cabin. Really appreciate these seats. They're cloth, but they feel nice. They, they did a really good job. I don't mind cloth seats. You've got USB-A and USB-C up there, and then another USB-A and USB-C in here. On top of that, you've got a wall-style outlet back here. I like the rotary shifter. It keeps things clean, crisp. It's super easy to use. Even Alyssa at Daily Motor, when she drove this, she was like, oh yeah, that's perfectly nice, easy to use right then and there. First try. And you gotta admit, this thing's just cool looking. It's fairly universal. I haven't yet to find anyone who thinks it looks weird or bad. And how convenient that we have a, a Bronco Sport non-Badlands right here. Which, which trim is this? This is the Big Bend. Some cool wheels. You can see it's a little bit lower. Maybe I'll park them right next to each other at the end and we'll kind of compare. You can see how much different the tires are, tires and wheels. Those, that one would probably be a good bit quieter, probably better fuel economy as well. But this is made for off-road and it does a darn good job at it. Pop and open the trunk. Look at how cool and rubberized all of this stuff is. You can pop these seats down and then you get a nearly flat load surface see at five foot ten I'm certainly not fitting in here to camp by any means but still a good amount of space you've got another 110 volt outlet back here and a 12 volt and some hooks quite a few actually metal tie down hooks down there as well the only complaint thing you should be aware of is this Badlands trim it has a pretty high load height so if you're someone smaller and you're trying to lift heavy things into the back of the car it's gonna be a little tougher for you. But underneath, you got a full-size spare, very important for off-roading, and a little area to store things.
Another cool thing you can do is just pop the glass. That comes open and you can reach in and move things around that way too. There's not the most rear seat room of any compact crossover. I'm five foot 10. My knee room is fairly limited, but I do have a lot of foot room, which is important. And my headroom is great. There's tons of that. The seats do not recline, so they're fairly upright. But this would be a plenty fine place to be for two adults to go on a trip. You've got your center fold down armrest, some hard cup holders, and some vents back here. A few other cool things, the seat pockets zip up and then they go way deep in here, probably about well, that far, is that 10 inches or so. Get that all the way in there. Almost feels like they're waterproof when they're zipped up. So that's kind of cool. And then you got these little side pockets as well. So maybe take a cell phone and slip it into there. I think that's pretty cool. I just thought of a lot of cool stuff for this car, and I really think that's going to resonate well with buyers. I'm happy about the Bronco Sport. I think Ford finally did something perfectly right, and it's been a long time, probably back since, oh, like the Ford Raptor and Ford Focus days that I could have said that about something Ford's done. So, super neat, and I'm happy with it. I think you would be too. Let's actually turn it around and park it right next to this white Bronco Sport. So there you can see that extra height difference, hopefully, in the sun. Definitely sits higher, looks a little more rugged. You've got the tow hooks sticking out on that one. But other than that, the headlights are pretty similar. The grill's a bit different. There's differences in wheel and tire. Roof rails are a little different as well. Looking at it from the back, quite similar. It's interesting that on the white model, the Bronco Sport lettering is still white. But honestly, approach angles and departure angles are fairly similar on both. So, I mean, that one sits lower, but other than that, you could still get away with quite a bit. Cool. Well, thank you all so much for watching. If you want to see more on the Bronco Sport, check the links in the description for our highway fuel economy test and our sound system test. We'll see you on the next one. I'm Charlie from Daily Motor, and as always, drive on. Mm -hmm.